Hello all, it's Nathan again with Follow My Vote. This is a follow-up video. In the last video, I showed you how to set up a Graphene Testnet blockchain and to set up a GUI running on that blockchain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Follow My Vote stake-weighted voting system on top of such a Graphene blockchain. So with no further ado, to get started, the first thing we need to do is install several dependencies. So we'll install those like so. We need Qt Creator. We need several modules of Qt which did not ship with this version of Antergos Linux, including charts, web sockets, and quick controls 2. We'll also need Botan, Captain Proto, and Python 2 YAML. So we'll go ahead and install those. Now most of this will go pretty quickly, but the Captain Proto dependency actually has to be downloaded and installed. Now that'll be all automated, but we do have to wait for it to finish compiling. So I'll go ahead and pause the video at this point, and when that finishes, I'll be back and show you the rest of the steps. And we're back. So now that that's done, we're going to start up Qt Creator, and we're going to go ahead and fetch the Follow My Vote stake weighted voting system code. So once Qt Creator fires up, here we go. We can hit New Project, Import Project, Git Clone. And as per usual, I'm going to put this into the dev subfol subfolder in my home directory. The repository is github.com slash follow my vote slash stake weighted voting. And we can go ahead and clone that. Alrighty, perfect. And we'll give that a moment to configure itself. Excellent. All right. Now there's, um, we'll note that the graphene backend is currently disabled. Uh, the stub backend is disabled, but we're not going to be using that. We'll be using the graphene backend. There's a couple things we need to do to enable the graphene backend. The first is we need to set the compiler to Clang. So if we go to Tools and Options and go to our Build and Run settings, and the kits are default kit, and we'll change the compiler to Clang. Next, we need to go to our Projects configuration. And down here at the bottom, we have our build environment. So let's expand that out. And we need to set an environment variable that lets the stake-weighted voting project find Graphene. And that, gra that environment variable is Graphene Path. And we'll set that to slash opt slash Graphene. All right, and now when we come back to our edit menu, we should see the Graphene backend enabled. And there it goes. All right, so now let's go ahead and start building that by clicking the little hammer icon in the bottom left corner. And we can see the output of that in this tab number four here at the bottom. So while that's building, let's go ahead and set up the blockchain. Now, before there was a witness node data dir that we created, I went ahead and removed that because I want to start over from scratch with a clean blockchain. So let's go ahead and uh, run the witness node to create that again. So to run that, we do slash opt slash graphene slash bin slash witness node. And then we hit control C to stop it. And now we can go into that uh, witness node data dir and edit the config. Now most of this is going to be the same thing we did the first time in the previous video, but there's one other thing that we need to do, which is to set this P2P endpoint to something. So we're going to set that to localhost and have it listen on port 37073. Uh, that port is arbitrary, but that's just uh, that's the one I use for this. And 
So next we need to, like last time, open an RPC endpoint, localhost, port 8090. That port is not arbitrary. We do need to set it to 8090. We'll need to enable stale production. And we'll need to enable several witnesses. There we go. And now we should be able to run the witness node again. And it begins producing a brand new blockchain. So the next thing we'll do is open up the Graphene UI by going to the Graphene UI slash web folder and running npm start. That'll take a while to get itself initialized. So while that's running, let's go ahead and do some initial preparations on the blockchain that will create the accounts and move the funds around so that we can have everything in place for the follow my vote voting system to start up and run. So to do that, we're going to cd to our home folder slash dev slash stake weighted voting slash graphene backend. And in here, we have a file called initchain.script. And that will be a script that sets up the blockchain for us. The way we run that script is by calling slash op slash graphene slash bin slash CLI wallet and having that take input from initchain.script. So that's going ahead and set up the blockchain for us. And we should now be able to start the um, follow my votes software when, uh, when it finishes building. So now we just need to wait for the web GUI to get started up. All right, so the web GUI is now finished setting itself up. So let's launch our web browser. And we're going to go to the web GUI at localhost port 8080. And there's a few things we need to do here. Uh, the first thing you'll note is that the wallet has reinitialized itself and it's now back to an unconfigured state. That's because we've restarted the blockchain. So let's go ahead and go to our settings in the top right here and create a new wallet. All right and we'll import the Nathan account into this wallet. So to get the Nathan account, we're going to go look at that init chain script again. So that's in home slash dev slash stake weighted voting slash graphene backend. If we cat init chain dot script, we see import key Nathan and a private key here. So we're just going to grab that key and import it into the web wallet. So go to the restore or import section, import a private key, and paste in that key. All right, that was a success. And now if we go to our dashboard, we should see the Nathan account. Here it is. And if we open that account, it has all of the money, as well as a new asset called vote. That asset is a asset that we use in our voting system to pay for the various actions that need to be uh, performed by the server. So we don't need to do anything in here right now, but what we do need to do is up on the top right in the address bar, we have this little icon that says this page wants to install a service handler. So if we click on that, it asks us if we want to allow localhost to open all web plus BTS links. Now handling that kind of URL is how the wallet declares itself so that third-party software can find it. So we need to set that to allow and hit finished. 
And that will allow the follow my vote application to find this wallet. So now we can go ahead and close this browser. And the next thing we want to do is actually start the graphene backend. So let's go to our uh, home slash dev directory. And you'll note that in this directory, Qt Creator has created this build stake weighted voting folder. So let's cd into there. There's a, another build directory inside of that. And in there is an install root folder and a bin folder. So once we get into there, we look and find that there are two programs in this folder. One is the graphene backend and one is the voting app. So let's go ahead and run the graphene backend. Let's start it up. Let's go ahead and hit Control-C to stop it again. Now, Graphene Backend is a full blockchain node, just like the Witness node. But Graphene Backend has a bunch of Follow My Vote software and plugins also installed into it. So when we ran it and closed it like that, it went ahead and created a data dir, But it didn't actually create it in the current directory. Um, instead, it created its data dir in the normal system data folders uh, location. So on a Mac, that would be home slash library slash application support. And on Linux, that would just be home slash dot follow my vote. So let's go ahead and uh, edit the config in there. So home slash dot follow my vote slash graphene backend data slash config dot ini. And the first thing we need to do in here, and actually the only thing we need to do in here, is to enable a seed node and have that point to the witness node that is currently running and producing blocks. So we opened that up on port 37073. So we just uh, put that seed node into here, and now we can close this. Now before we start the graphene backend again, there is actually another config file that needs to be set up. So let's open a new tab and go to the source folder. So tilde slash stake weighted uh, slash dev slash stake weighted voting slash graphene backend. And in here, we have a file called example.cfg. Now, when we look in that example configuration file, we see a number of things. Most of this is just some defaults on prices and limits and whatnot. But we've also got a couple of keys in here. Now those keys are, uh, those correspond to the ones that the init chain script set up. And so we'll want to use this example file without any changes. The way we put this uh, config file into, um, into use is we actually have to compile it. And this command up at the top here shows us how to do that. Now we're going to copy that command, but instead of just writing it to output.cfg, we're going to put it into that, uh, that configuration folder. So tilde slash dot follow my vote slash graphene backend data slash blockchain slash configuration dot bin. There's a default one that was already created, but that one doesn't have these keys. So we'll go ahead and hit enter, and that has replaced that default empty configuration with this example configuration. And this is the one that has the appropriate keys that will allow the system to function on the chain that we've set up. So now, if we come back to this tab, we can run the graphene backend. And this has now synced up with the witness node that we've got running oops, in this tab. And so the witness node is producing blocks. And now uh, the witness node, here we go, generated blocks. So the witness node is producing blocks, and the graphene black backend is receiving those blocks. So we now have two nodes in our little blockchain network. So at this point, we can go ahead and start up the voting app. So back in Qt Creator, you can run the voting app from the command line, by the way, but it's a lot easier to do it from Qt Creator because that sets up some environment variables to, uh, to find the other components of the um, follow my vote software. 
which otherwise you would have to set environment variables manually. So we'll run this out of Qt Creator. So make sure that in the, um, in the project menu here in the, in the uh, run configuration menu that we have voting app selected and then hit the big green play button. Oh, uh, before we can do that though, we do need to set the working directory. So if we go to projects and run and then set our working directory, we'll just browse for it. We need to set it to the source directory. So that's in our dev folder slash stake weighted voting slash voting app. So we'll select that and now we should be able to run the voting app. And the voting app is running. Uh, it's a little small now. Let's expand that window up a bit. Now the voting app has gone ahead and automatically launched the BitShares wallet. It did that because we set that, um, that URL handler for it. So now we have to put in our password and that unlocks the wallet and the voting app is up and running. So if we go to our menu here, uh, by default it set the current account to init0, which was the first one it found. But we actually want to change that to the Nathan account because that's the one that has funds. And so now we can go ahead and create a contest. So we'll just give it a, some dummy, uh, dummy settings for it. So we'll just say it's a contest uh, with a description. Very exciting, isn't it? And contest name, we'll say Joe. Vote for Joe. And we've got Bob. And Bob can say vote for Joe too, because why not? And we'll check out. Give that a moment. All right. So we've got our checkout dialog. It's going to cost 10 vote. And we hit purchase. So now we have to go to our wallet to confirm this purchase. And it's telling us that it's going to cost 10 vote. There's a transaction fee of 20 core. And it's coming from the Nathan account paying to the follow my vote account. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And the transaction is being broadcast. All right, and that's done. And we can see over here that the um, graphene backhand has indeed received and processed that, uh, that contest. And so now if we open our voting app again and refresh the contest list, voila, we have our contest. And so now we can select the candidate that we want to vote for. Um, it tells us to vote for Joe, so we'll just vote for Joe and cast a vote. And in order to cast the vote, we now need to go back to our wallet and confirm that transaction once again. So we hit confirm. We'll wait for that to finish broadcasting. All right, perfect, that's confirmed. And now when we come to our app, we can click on this contest and open it. And we see, let me grow this window a little bit. Joe indeed has a vote. Now. His vote is uh, very, very large. That's because this is a stake-weighted voting system and the Nathan account has a very large balance. But um, that's behaving the way it should be. And so that is how the uh, stake-weighted voting system works. So thank you very much for watching and definitely get in touch if you have any questions or concerns or if, uh, if you have any trouble following these instructions.